Hey everybody, what's up? I wanted to bring you a quick video on how I made my tabletop display. Um, it is a very raw video just from using photos of the process and a couple of videos. I kind of go through the process pretty quickly, but let me know if you have any questions. Um, the way that I started the process was I had just been envisioning this display for my tabletop for a really, really long time. And then I came across the tutorial and it explained how to do floor stands that were very similar to what I was thinking about making. And so basically I followed that tutorial and I just made everything smaller. And this was my original drawing. This was my, my architectural blueprint that I brought out to Brandon and I asked for help. And so basically just going really off of what my, um, my cutting mat size is, I was like, oh, okay. So I want a two foot wide by three foot tall display. And I knew that it basically needed supports. So like legs to fit out the bottom. And yeah, so again, using this tutorial that I had found, I adapted it. So I was lucky enough to find a piece of wood pre-cut at Lowe's that was three feet tall by two feet wide. And then I just got a pre-cut round. So you'll find them, they're over in like the, the lumber area, but they're for, if you wanna make like a round table, they're just pre-cut tabletops. And so I just use that and cut that in half to create my stabilizer legs. Um, my first go, it's very janky. Uh, my drill holes are all kind of messed up and especially where um, we used a circular saw to create the actual, cause the way that it works is the peg the round is here and it has a slit cut out and then the pegboard is here and it has a slit cut out and they slide in and they interlock together. And so these slits are very raw and not um, beautiful at all. However, when they're put together, you can't see, for the most part, you can't see the, the mess ups and how bad it looks. But I really personally don't care. Um, the other thing is with the drill holes, they, a lot of them are pretty bad, but when you put the peg through and then you have product on it, it's, you, you'd be hard pressed. And if somebody points it out, I mean, you know, screw them anyways. But so I went through the whole process. Um, and then I left mine raw. You can stain it. You can polycrylic it. You can paint it. You can wallpaper. You can do whatever you want to. It. It's just raw wood. But my aesthetic on my table is as you've, noticed black with raw wood so it really fit into my scheme without doing anything to the wood overall now if you are vending in you know possibly like the pacific northwest or somewhere that it's rainy and damp all the time you might want to consider at least putting polyacrylic on it just so that over time it doesn't warp or you know absorb water so the product list or my inst my purchase list, the things that I got um, was I got a half inch piece of plywood. And again, it was that pre-cut three foot by two foot. And then I got the one of the wooden rounds. Now the wooden round was wider than the actual plywood. So that's a detail that you really need to pay attention to when you're cutting out the slits. So you need to make sure that the slit that you cut out on the round is the same width as the piece of plywood that you're using for the actual pegboard and vice versa. That's about the trickiest part, but it's it's really not that hard. Um, and then I used half inch wooden dowels. So I just got one big long wooden dowel rod and then I hand cut. Um, they do have packs of 12 inch long dowel rods. And I also got a pack of those because something that I realized after I finished the display is you can put long peg pegs through the the hole, and then you can use it as a double-sided display. So yeah, the dowel rods, the plywood, the wooden round, I used a circular saw and then I used a jigsaw because my the top of my display is rounded. So I used a jigsaw for that to make that easier. And then I used a circular sander and I used, I think 80 grit and then I used 220 grit and I sanded my life away on these things. Um, I really tried to make the edges nice and smooth so that when I was chucking the pieces around, they wouldn't catch me or give me splinters or anything like that. So I think that's it. 
Um, the other thing I do kind of touch on it, but I did not use a grid to lay out my pegboard or my peg holes. I just kind of made lines of them um, with the idea that I could put shelves on them as well. So like I cut really short little shelves and then I have the full length shelves. And so that way it makes it a really modular system. Um, this size display, I didn't realize how big it was going to be on my table. It takes up a, a huge section of my table, obviously two feet of it, which in my mind didn't seem that big. Um, but it is big. It's a, it's a very large display. That being said, I do like it. Um, and I like the aesthetic and I like how it draws your eyes up, but it is just a very large display that I'm not used to having on my table, but I'm confident obviously with more use that I will. And I think I might try to delve into building bigger displays. So like actual floor displays that are six feet tall or five feet tall by three feet wide, which is, you know, actual sheets of plywood cut in half and the like. Um, because then I can really hang my bags. This one, I put my wristlets and I put the dog collars on it. And then, like I said, I kind of just cut little shelves, which I don't go over in this video, by the way, but I have the little shelves to where I can like put wallets and things on it as well. So I hope this video didn't make it more confusing. Let me know if you have any questions and please enjoy my super um, terrible voiceover on this video. So the first thing that I got was this edge glued panel. This is a pre-cut panel that is three feet tall by two feet wide. And I got it from Lowe's. Secondly, I got this pre-cut round. I believe it is 12 inches, it might be 15 inches round. First step is you need to cut that round in half directly down the center. I used a cordless circular saw to do that. I wanted a rounded top edge, so I used my circular round to create that shape before cutting it in half. Now you need to mark the slits for both your pegboard and your rounds. I measured four inches on both and you need to keep in mind the width of your wooden rounds and the width of your actual pegboard because they might be different. And then I used a circular saw, well Brandon did, to notch all the way up the four inches and then we used a chisel to get a nice flat edge where the pegboard will lay in the rounds. And then we repeated that on the actual pegboard itself. So cut up the slits and notch it out, keeping your cuts as straight and even as possible. Now the fun part, we get to work on the actual pegboard itself. And I switched over to a jigsaw and cut out the rounded edges that I drew earlier. Next, you need to lay out where you want your pegs to go on your pegboard. You can see mine are a little willy nilly. I just kind of went all over the place with it. And then I used a half inch drill bit to drill through and create the actual peg holes. And then of course, take a slow-mo of you blowing the sawdust. And lastly, you want to sand and sand and sand and sand. Make those edges smooth. I liked mine to be a little bit rounded. You can see my drilled holes are a little raw, but it doesn't really matter once the pegs are in. And here it is all done. Let me know what you think. Stay crafty, my friends.